Hey everyone, it's Voistro. Welcome back to another video. It's been a busy and exciting past week, so that's why I wasn't able to get the video out on Monday. But in terms of being busy, school just started off and has a lot going on for me right now, so it pushes back on the time that I'm able to edit as much. Granted, this isn't going to stop me from making videos, but it may just push back on the time that I'm able to do it within the week. So as much as I wanted to stick to a consistent upload schedule, that's going to be a lot more difficult than I anticipated. But for the exciting news, I just got an entire new setup this past week. So no longer am I going to be doing everything from a laptop, but it treated me well for almost the past five years, so I can't complain. But now I'll be on my brand new pre-built PC from Build Redux. And to go along with my new PC, I got a Logitech G815 keyboard and an Asus Tough VG259QM monitor. I'll talk a bit about each of the products and give my personal opinion on them. Now, just to clarify, I'm by no means a tech reviewer or an unboxing channel, so please don't be expecting a professional review. I'd say, if anything, this is just a review from an average person when it comes to this type of stuff. We'll be saving the biggest thing for last, with that being the PC itself. So we'll go ahead and talk about the keyboard and the monitor and get those out of the way. So to start off with, we'll be looking at the G815 keyboard from Logitech. It's a low profile mechanical keyboard that uses Logitech's GL switches and it comes in at 22 millimeters in height. The build quality is very good with the top side of the keyboard being made of aluminum while the underside is made of a high quality plastic. It comes in three different switch types which include clicky, tactile, and linear. I personally got the tactile option because I didn't want the louder clicky option but I did want a little bit of feedback that you wouldn't get with the linear switch type. It has 5G keys that can be fully customized using macros or specific commands. You're also able to fully customize the RGB lights with a variety of style presets that are given to you. Both the G keys and the lights are fully customizable using the G-Hub software that is offered for free from Logitech. This keyboard also offers a dedicated area for media control and a volume wheel. In terms of media control, you're able to skip around on tracks, pause or play your music, or mute it. There's also a game mode option that you can turn on with a single button, which disables the Windows keys, and you're also able to customize it to disable any other keys if you would like it to. It has a nice six foot braided cable that has two USB connections, where one of them is used for the keyboard itself, and then there's another USB dedicated to the USB port that is on the back of the keyboard. So you don't need to plug in both if you don't plan on using the USB port on the back of the keyboard. You really only need to plug in the one dedicated to the keyboard itself. Now personally I chose this keyboard because of the low profile build because I came from a laptop that has the super low profile scissor switches and I mean every laptop has pretty low profile keys as is. So I didn't want to go to anything too high profile. I've had the keyboard for a little over a week now and I have to say I really enjoy it so far and it hasn't been too big of an adjustment in terms of the key height profile. This keyboard comes in at $200 on Logitech's website, but I have seen it for cheaper on Amazon for around $170. Next we'll discuss the Asus Tough VG259QM monitor. This monitor comes in at 24.5 inches with a resolution of 1920x1080p. It uses an IPS panel and it also has a refresh rate of 280Hz. Granted, that's the overclock measurement because default it does go for 240 hertz, which is still extremely nice. It has a one millisecond response time using its fast IPS technology, and it also has an HDR mode that can be enabled that is rated at 400 nits. This monitor is also G-Sync compatible. You're also able to change any of the settings on the monitor using a small joystick on the back of the monitor and while using it, it will come up with a little menu where you can access all the settings on the monitor that it's capable of doing. In terms of connectivity, there is a display port, two HDMI ports, and a headphone jack. The stand on this monitor is very stable and you're also able to adjust the height of the monitor with ease. You can also swivel, pivot, and tilt the monitor, so there are plenty of ways to adjust this monitor to your liking with all these features. I've also had this monitor for a little bit over a week now and I think it's a great monitor and I'm really loving the high refresh rates. This monitor comes in around at $320. One thing to take note on is if you would like to play games at higher resolution, you're actually able to use DSR, Dynamic Super Resolution, through GeForce Experience. Using this allows you to play games in a higher resolution, whether it be 2K or 4K, and it essentially shrinks down the resolution to fit your monitor. 
I personally have used it for a variety of games, and you can certainly tell a difference. Now onto the main thing, the PC itself. As I mentioned, I got my PC from Build Redux, which is a newer company when it comes to pre-built PCs that started in late 2020. And their goal is to provide pre-built PCs with little to no markup on the price of the parts with only adding a $75 build fee, which also includes a two year warranty, so that's pretty nice as well. Customizing a PC on their website is pretty intuitive, but if anybody has any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. The customization is limited to an extent on Build Redux since you can only customize the graphics card, processor, RAM, storage, and whether or not you want Windows 10 or no operating system. Everything else is chosen for you which includes the power supply, the case, the cooling components, and the motherboard. Granted this does change to a different board if you get an AMD processor so it's all compatible. Also it comes with a wireless adapter but it can't be taken out of the build even if you don't need it. Even with it being limited customization, I personally didn't mind this since I just felt it was easier to have it chosen for me, but I know some people would want a little bit more freedom when it comes to what they can customize. One true downside with Build Redux though, is that for some parts you don't know what brand you'll be getting until you open it up and take a look for yourself. For instance, the motherboard, RAM, power supply, storage, and GPU do not have a brand directly attached to it on the website, so parts may vary. Granted, for the motherboard, they do have a few brands associated with it on the website within the details, but you aren't able to select which one you want, therefore it still is a bit random. If you're able to get past this obstacle though, I do believe that it is a pretty good option to go with in terms of the prices that they offer. Especially for graphics cards right now, with how crazy the current market is, it just personally it was easier to go with this than do a custom build or anything of the sorts. In terms of customer service, I can't speak for everyone, but for me, they were very responsive and replied to an email that I sent them within an hour. In terms of production and shipping times, I was expecting for it to be around 6 weeks when I placed the order, but it, I actually got mine in 3.5 weeks from the time that I placed the order, so I was very pleased with the overall time that it took to get to me. Whenever it arrived, I have to say I was like a little kid on Christmas and was super excited to go get this thing on the front porch. My box was in pretty good shape in comparison to some that I've seen in other reviews since I only had a couple spots in the box that were messed up, but nothing major by any means. I also had my handle intact, so that was nice since I also saw that some people didn't have theirs whenever it arrived. As soon as you open the box, the first flap says, Welcome to PC Gaming. Then when the next flap is open, right away you see a small box on the top that has some accessories or extra parts for your PC. It contains a motherboard manual, a flash drive, a power cable, the remote for the case lighting, a quick start guide, the box for the wireless connector that has some antennas that need to be put on the PC, some extra zip ties, and some other power cables if you plan on adding anything else to the PC, as well as some cables to connect a hard drive to the motherboard. With all the accessories out, I was gentle trying to get the computer out of the box, and when I got it out, you can see that it has a thick foam on both the top and the bottom, for protection while shipping, and it comes in a drawstring bag. I got the packing foam and the bag off, and this is what it looks like straight out of the box. They put packing foam in the actual computer to keep everything stable while in the shipping process, which is nice. Right away, I took the glass cover off from the side and took the packing foam out, which is pretty easy to do, and plugged it in. Now one thing you may notice here is that the lights on the inside of the case are not on, which I wasn't sure of at first, but it turns out they didn't plug the lights into the power supply, so I went ahead and did that myself, which luckily that wasn't hard to do. One thing that I do wish was different is that the CPU cooler was flipped so that the hoses were on the bottom, but it's not anything major. Anyways, to list the specs on my computer, I got an Asus Tough 3080, an Asus Prime Z590P motherboard, two 8GB sticks of XPG Gamix D10 DDR4-3200 RAM, an Intel Core i7-10700K processor, a Cooler Master MWE Gold V2 850W power supply, and a 500GB Kingston SSD. Out of all this, the main thing I would change is the SSD, but everything else I'm very happy with. I also plan on adding my own hard drive, which is the reason why I didn't include one on this build, and I'll most likely upgrade the RAM to 32 gigs at some point down the road, but not at the moment. Besides the lights, I had no issue out of the box, and setup was really easy. 
With all that being said, here are some games to show the performance of the PC straight out of the box, and I'll be using DSR in some of the games so the resolution will vary depending on the game, but I'll be sure to display that on the side. Overall, I'm very happy with my purchase and I'm really loving the new setup entirely. I'm looking forward to continuing the channel and being able to play on something that is a big improvement for my laptop. Hopefully this video is a bit informative on these products, but if there's anything that I missed that you may be curious about, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you on those. Thanks for watching guys and have a good day.